the Milgram case. Hi, this is Consumer Protection Attorney Bill Clanton, and today we'll be talking about a case. This is the Milgram case. It's out of a uh, the Southern District of Florida, Fort Lauderdale Division, um, and it involves a um, Shelley Milgram. <laughs> Unfortunate case for her. So she hired an employee that um, ended up opening an account, a Chase bank account, uh, without her knowledge and ran up about thirty thousand dollars in charges on it now it, it it's a little weird um, the ID theft made payments out of Milgram's business which is kind of weird I guess she didn't the, it talks about in the case but she didn't keep a close eye on her checking account I don't know um, anyways um, Milgram had a um, interior design business and this employee who was a convicted felon on probation for grand theft uh, felony um, stole uh, opened accounts without her permission and uh, stole money to pay on those accounts and ran up charges about thirty thousand dollars and then eventually this person was arrested and convicted of identity theft and um, and was sentenced to prison um, so Milgram was the victim of identity theft and she disputed it with Chase, um, and Chase did not um, did not recognize her disputes, meaning that they did not agree that it was identity theft. They looked at this long history with the card, that payments came from um, her business, and they said this is not identity, identity theft after investigating it. Then they put it on her credit report, and she disputed it with the credit bureaus, um, and Chase came to the same conclusion. Each dispute, she added more information, and Chase still came to the same conclusion, that it was not identity theft and that it was her debt. And so she sued Chase Bank. Um, and um, it looks like just Chase Bank here. And the, the court went to a long, it's a long opinion, 17 pages, longer than a lot of opinion, especially for a, a district court. It's not an appeals court. It's a district court opinion. Um, and the, the court went through very carefully, analyzed this. Um, there were no factual disagreements um, about the facts of either side that put forth. Um, and it basically went through Chase's procedures and said that Chase had analyzed the disputes, had reviewed the information, followed procedures, and had simply come to a different conclusion than... Um, than Milgram. So, unfortunately for Milgram, the court held that um, that she owed the debt, that, that Chase's reporting was accurate. Uh, not, not so much that she owed the debt, but that Chase's reporting was not inaccurate. Um, it talked about, uh, made some interesting observations about statutes of limitations in fair credit reporting cases. Statute of limitations, um, it agreed, is two years from the last dispute. So, um, each new letter has a new obligation for a furnisher or a credit reporting agency to investigate and respond to that letter. So each new letter you send in dispute, each new dispute letter, creates a new statute of limitations. Um, I don't think it's ever wise to wait out the statute of limitations, but, um, but once a furnisher like Chase gets a, um, gets a dispute in, the court says here that when a furnisher reports that disputed information has been verified, the question of whether the furnisher behaved reasonably will turn on whether the furnisher acquired sufficient evidence to support the conclusion that the information was true. So, in here, Milgram sent in um, evidence of, of the ID theft, um, of this person's uh, criminal activity, and the court then turned to... Um, whether Chase had a procedure in place and whether that procedure was reasonable. And um, they said that Chase did. And Chase was not unreasonable in this dispute. And so, um, unfortunately, the um, court said that Chase is entitled to summary judgment on Milgram's FCRA claim. Um, it says the court is mindful that Milgram has faced clear difficulty in connection 
with this employee's criminal conduct. But the case is about Chase's compliance with the duties as specified under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, and those undisputed facts show that Chase complied with its statutory duties, notwithstanding Milgram's disagreement about the ultimate conclusion whether she owed the $30,000 it was run up by the identity thief. Now, what can we take from this case? Well, keep an eye on your accounts. Uh, if you suspect somebody's an ID thief, uh, stolen your identity, keep an eye on your bank accounts. Um, I think if Milgram hadn't waited two years, if Milgram kept a closer eye on, on her bank accounts, this might not have happened. If this had gone on for six months or, or 10 months or t maybe even 12 months, Chase might have been in a different position where it would have had to recognize that this was identity theft. Um, I don't know what Milgram put into her disputes, but certainly criminal convictions, you know, a, a, that, that happen at the state court level where this uh, employee was prosecuted for these crimes would have been helpful. Um, if she had worked with the prosecutors and gotten the prosecutors to declare that this Chase account was part of the identity theft, that certainly would have been helpful information for Chase to have. Um, in framing these disputes and, and putting these dispute letters together um, and the information included in those could have helped her argument. Um, again, I don't know what she did. I don't know what was in her letters. Um, but it's important if you're not making progress with your dispute letters to get some help. And if you need help crafting a dispute letter or want some help, somebody to review your, your dispute letters, give us a call. We're happy to help you with that. We don't want you to have the same fate as uh, Ms. Milgram did here, where a debt that's a result of identity theft cannot come off your credit report because a bank followed procedures and came to a different conclusion. Um, that's just a, a terrible thing to have happen to somebody. And uh, we're happy to work with you to keep that from happening to you. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate you keeping an eye on this channel. Thanks a lot.